I am going to talk about Patrick Shaw. Patrick Shaw is a unique individual whom even 10 centuries from today we will not get somebody like him. Okay, some people can act a movie about him because you will find somebody as heavy as Patrick Shaw and somebody with a mannerism like Patrick Shaw but uh, Patrick Shaw was unique. Before I talk about Patrick Shaw, let me talk about uh, Staray Boy Center and some two politicians who are patrons of Staray Boy Center. Uh, Geoffrey Griffin started Staray Boy Center in, just before independence. It was like a rescue center. Actually, during my time, we had two sets of students. I remember there was a boy whose father was a, was a permanent secretary, and we had uh, some boys who were chokoras. What used to happen is that uh, if you are, let's say a permanent secretary or a very prominent person, who knew that Sarebo Center performed well, you would uh, bring your child there, then you pay school fees for several children. Your child and several children. Uh, since you want your child to be among clever kids and you want to genuinely pass an exam, you would offer to pay fees for three, four, five, even six other kids. Uh, but mostly, Staray used to rely on donors in, uh, fr uh, from abroad. Now, Geoffrey Griffin did two things. One, when he went to Great Britain, he found Mr. Patrick Shaw, who used to mobilize funds for him in Great Britain. At the same time, when Kenya attained independence, at the same time when Kenya attained independence, uh, Griffin uh, realized that he needed political goodwill. So he talked to Tom Boyer, who was the area MP, who became a Staray Boy Center patron immediately after independence. Tom Boyer lost his life in 1969 and uh, the next patron was Emilio Mai Wakibaki. Emilio Mai Wakibaki was its patron until a few months ago when he lost his life. Uh, Emilio Kibaki is, was his father's name. Correction. Kibaki was his father's nickname. His father used to sell tobacco. And tobacco in Kikuyu is called Mbake. Now, somehow he used to sell people less uh, tobacco than the amount. So, a small, a small uh, tobacco was Kibaki. So he was, called, he was nicknamed Kibaki and the name stuck. So, Emilio Mwai son of Kibaki, was elected MP for Donholm, which later was renamed Bahati. Then he was transferred, he transferred to be the MP for Odaya, but still maintained being the, being the patron of Staray Boy Center. He became a patron until the time when they differed with the Moi in 1992, when Kibaki, uh, you know, in a Staray Boy Center, we have something we call Annual Founders Day. And it used to be attended by the head of state. From 1992 all the way to 2002, Kibaki would not attend it because of his political difference with, with Moi. So during the time when they were reading out the guests, they would say Kibaki did not come. Uh, absent with apologies, patron. Then 2002, Kibaki became its patron at the same time 
the president of Kenya. I'm talking about uh, Kibaki being uh, the patron of Sarebo Center because uh, Kibaki was to be assassinated by Patrick Shaw and uh, Patrick Shaw remembered that they, ha they have a history and actually at the time when Patrick Shaw was supposed to assassinate Kibaki that time Kibaki was the, you, you see he's the assistant director of Starreboy Center in charge of discipline and he was supposed to assassinate the patron of that so he hesitated, hesitated. but let me go back we'll come to that at the conclusion Patrick Shaw, as I've said, he was one of the uh, mobilizers of finance for Starry Boy Center in Britain. Then he reached a place where he wanted to settle in Kenya permanently. So he was allowed and he came to Kenya. When he came to Kenya, Starry Boy Center had three directors, but only one was known. Apart from Geoffrey Griffin, there were two other directors, Kikuyus, or can I say it Kenyans, uh, but they were not known. Then uh, he came and he was made an assistant director in charge of discipline. Starreboy Center had three different faculties, if I could say. It had a primary school and it had a secondary school, which went up to Form 6. And it had also a technical school. So there was technical, there was a high school, and then there was primary school. Each had its own head teacher, answerable to the director. Now, the discipline was so high in uh, Starreboy Center that I wonder why they had to place a position of assistant director in charge of discipline. Uh, it was an idle job. And, uh, and even, even if it was an idle job, you see, being a director or an assistant director, was a voluntary job. It is not a job that you relied on for salary. And that is why Geoffrey Griffin used to work as the director of National Youth Service, which was a full paying job. Uh, when Patrick Shaw came to keep himself busy, he, he, he did a second job that was also voluntary, the one which is called police reservist. Police reservist, we have many, I can give an example, but uh, he was the most famous police reservist of the rank of chief inspector. Uh, police reservist, you don't get salary. You're not like a police officer who earns at the end of the month. You only get allowances. So for somebody like uh, Patrick Shaw being a police reservist, that was just a hobby, but he used to take a lot of time on it. He used to work with a police walkie-talkie, so he used to know where crooks were being followed. And he would follow those crooks, and he was used to shoot them. Yeah, he shot most of them, but one or two could be said, uh, you see, you, you, you arrest the suspect, and uh, after subduing the subject, suspect, you, you wait for Patrick Shaw to kill him. Or Patrick Shaw finds somebody shot, been shot dead, then he shoots the second time for a photo. But again, that is what used to happen. Patrick Shaw had a rare sickness. He had a rare sickness, a medical condition. You see, when you are sleeping, there is a possibility of your tongue going into your airway. And if your tongue goes into your airway, you, during your sleep, you, ca you can suffocate. This problem, Patrick Shaw had it to an extent that he did not sleep on a bed. At night, that is why he was working uh, for the police reserve for 20 hours. Then you add two hours of, uh, uh, of the Starreboy Center. He used to sleep in one or so hours. And his sleep was he could go to a corner, a corner of a wall, bend a bit like this, and believe it or not, he could get sleep while standing for about an hour.
then he would wake up and that was in it was a rare medical condition it was a rare medical condition uh, but he used to do it uh, as a police reservist I am aware although I had not yet joined the police uh, my father was in the CID I am aware that he's the one who shot Wakinyonga at uh, Kangemi now Wakinyonga had uh, bought uh, uh, you know there are these bars which on the side is also a butchery he went and bought a, a a whole cow you see the, if you if you can remember butchery they show you half of the cow hanging on a hook so he took half of it and said that it should be boiled for 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 dr drunkards to eat and the other half was to be uh, nyamachoma and uh, he said everybody should drink there he had money and he started swearing that uh, he will not die before he kills a police officer so when he said he will not die without killing a police officer somebody went to a telephone booth and rang the police Patrick Shaw came and killed him uh, he then also killed uh, Francis Ongachui but you see the Francis Ongachui was Wakinyonga's deputy so when Wakinyonga died, Francis Ongashui took over. But Swahili, Swahili do say, Sikio la kufa aliski dawa. But Francis Ongashui did the same. He went to Nairobi West. Then uh, half of the cow boiled, half of it nyamachoma. Started talking the same things. Uh, police, reserve, police officers and police reservists followed him. He left the shopping in Nairobi West, went to Cody Road. Cody Road is a, a, a cul-de-sac, but somewhere in the half, there is a way you can jump a river, or you could jump a river during that time, and come to where Tasca Mall is, Timor. At uh, this place nowadays, it was a roundabout, but during those days, it was a junction. When Francis Onigashui reached there, he came face to face with Patrick Shaw. He raised up his hands and said, Please don't kill me. Before I come to the political assassination, let me say that uh, policemen, even today, they profile crooks. So Patrick Shaw, uh, you have heard of Columbia. This is a Mukamba musician. Uh, we have heard of the warrior in uh, Pangani. This thing about killing profile uh, started with Mr. Shaw. Or even earlier, but I may not know. But I know of Mr. Shaw. So what Mr. Shaw used to do, he used to use his own money, not even police money. He would know of a crook, he knew where he came from. He would drive all the way to where the crook's original home is. And he would tell the mother. He would give the mother some money, this is money for your upkeep. And this is the money for your son. Tell your son to get out of Nairobi alive, otherwise he'll come back dead. And he would tell the mother that... Uh, you know a place called Kabete, you know a place called Gidurai, you know a place called Earth River, and you know a place called Rongai. That area, your son is not supposed to be there. So if the mother told the son to go and the side did not agree, then uh, Tomboy, no, then uh, Patrick Shaw would kill the person. Lastly, but most important, Moi used to send people to kill people. Although some people also kill, around Moy also killed other people. And this is also applicable to Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta, Mzee Jomo Kenyatta. But I'm talking of Moy. So the duty of assassinating Mwai Kibaki fell on Patrick Shaw. Patrick Shaw was given that duty, but he was reluctant because of his association with Kibaki on matters to do with Stare Boy Center. So he did not do it, and that is why he was killed. I'm made to understand that a lot of crooks attended his funeral because uh, they really wanted to make sure that he has been buried. It is unfortunate that even Kibaki knowing all these things, he was not in this tech, in the eh, Yokizungungum, about uh, the TGRC. Otherwise, during the TGRC, I would have given evidence on how Kibaki was to be killed. 
that is by 15 minutes goodbye